Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, <coughs> Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. All the citizens of Shechem and all Beth Milo came together and proceeded to make Abimelech king by the terebinth at the memorial pillar in Shechem. When this was reported to him, Jotam went to the top of Mount Gerizim and standing there cried out to them in a loud voice, 
Hear me, citizens of Shechem, that God may then hear you. Once the trees went to anoint the king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree answered them, Must I give up my rich oil, whereby men and gods are honored, and go to wave over the trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, Come, you reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Must I give up my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to wave over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come, you, and reign over us. But the vine answered them, Must I give up my wine that cheers gods and men, and go to wave over the trees? Then all the trees said to the back thorn, Come, you reign over us. But the back thorn replied to the trees, if you wish to anoint me king over you in good faith, come and take refuge in my shadow. Otherwise, let fire come from the back thorn and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O oh Lord, in your strength the king is glad, in your victory how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire, you refuse not the wish of his lips. Lord, in your strength the king is glad, for you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You place on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you, you gave him length of days forever and ever. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Great is his glory in your victory. Majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. You made him a blessing forever. You gladdened him with the joy of your face. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the landowner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, 
each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today are stories of people who pretend that they know better than God. In our first reading, the people of Shechem and Beth Milo, the Israelites who are now living in the Promised Land, demand God to give them a king. Up until this point, the Israelites do not have a king. God simply appoints judges who act as military officer. The Israelites do not have a king simply because they only have one king, God. Israelites, the Israelites only have God as their king. But the Israelites insisted on having their own God, their own king, because they want to be like the other nations who have their kings. And so through Jotham, God warned the people about the dangers of having a king. Jotham narrated a parable to tell them what a king would do to them, that the king would dominate them, that the king would rule over them, that the king would even enslave them and ask them to serve him. But the Israelites were very persistent. They want a king for themselves. They thought that having a king would be good for them. And so they had Abimelech as their king. After three years, the people rebelled against Abimelech. And as a punishment to those who rebelled against the king, Abimelech burned them alive. They think they know better than God. They think they know what is good for them. But in the end, they realized that they were wrong. Only God knows what is best for them. In our gospel today, we heard the parable of Jesus about the landowners and the laborers whom he hired to work in his vineyard. And we see the same issue that we saw in the first reading. 
the laborers who worked longest in the vineyard questioned the ways of the landowner. The, these tenants, these workers, ask the landowner, why are you giving us the same salary as those who worked only for one hour? By asking this, they are telling the landowner that you should work, you should operate on the normal principles of labor. Those who work longer should receive more. Those who work shorter should receive less. They thought they know better than the landowner. But the landowner was operating on a different principle, the principle of generosity. And that principle, the workers could not understand. My dear brothers and sisters, many times we also pretend that we know better than God. Many times we think we know what is good for us than God. But in the end, many times also we realize that we really do not know anything, that we do not know what is good for us, that God knows better than we do. Maraming pagkakataon, nagpapanggap tayo na mas marunong pa tayo sa Diyos. Na mas alam natin kung ano ang dapat gawin. Na mas alam natin kung ano ang makakabutik sa atin. Na mas alam natin ang solusyon sa mga bagay-bagay. Na mas alam natin ang paraan para mapabuti ang ating buhay. Nagpapanggap na mas magagaling pa mas marurunong pa sa Diyos. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, those who pretend that they know better than God always end up in failure and in disaster. And worse, those who pretend that they know better than God will only bring harm to others. Yan ang nakakatakot kapag nagpapanggap na tayong mas magaling sa Diyos. Lalo tayong mapapahamak, lalo tayong mapapasama, at ang mga taong nag-aakala na mas magaling sila sa Diyos, magdudulot lamang ng lalong kapahamakan sa kanilang kapwa. Kaya mag-iingat tayo, let us be careful let us always trust in the good, in the better ways of God. My dear brothers and sisters, stop pretending that you know better than God. Stop insisting on your own ways because our eyes could see only the limited sight, the limited things our sight could perceive. But God's eyes see eternity. We could only operate according to the logic of this world. But God operates on a greater logic, the logic of His love. And so when God tells you, I know better. Let us believe Him. Let us just trust Him. God's ways are not our ways because His justice and generosity exceed our standards. We can come to Him in prayer knowing that He listens and that He will not fail us.
For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, that the Church, through its missionaries and preachers, may proclaim the Lord's Gospel with courage and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer, that we may serve the Lord and one another without expecting merits and rewards, but out of the generosity of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that those unemployed may find work soon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that the sick and the suffering may be comforted by the compassion and understanding of their family and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that those who have zealously worked in this life may receive their due reward in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We pray for the people who need our prayers. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Haiti and in Afghanistan. And we also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Lord our God, we are your humble servants, and we serve you as best as we can, although you owe us nothing. But we know that you are near to us and that you bless us with every good thing on account of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end. We acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, <clears throat> that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Receiver, made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to our Healing Rosary for the World tonight, which will be hosted by the parish community of St. Rose of Lima Parish in Santa Rosa, Laguna. This is in preparation for the feast day of St. Rose of Lima on Monday, August 23. St. Rose is the secondary patroness of the Philippines. And so let us gather as a family and as a community tonight at 9 o'clock to pray the rosary, to ask the intercession of Our Lady for healing and for peace in our country and in the whole world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>